And he'll be appearing for the next two weeks at Caroline's, a club right here in New York City. Excuse me, please welcome Mr. Jay Leno. Hi, Jay. Hi, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Nice to see you. Gonna be at Caroline's for two weeks. I'll be at Caroline's for two weeks. You gonna come down this time? Uh, only if I'm invited. I was sure. I was there once before. You came down. Robin Williams. The boys in the band are coming. To, actually, I found something here that. The boys in the band are coming. You mean the party boys of rock and roll are coming? <laughs> you know the party boys of rock and roll did a record that I have here a number of years ago. Uh -huh. Uh, it's a pretty rare copy. It's become kind of a cult classic. There are only about three or four hundred pressings of it. I don't know if you've, a lot of people are familiar. It's called Paul Schaefer Sings the Best of the Penthouse Letters. I wow. People are... Whoa. I mean, listen. I mean, listen to some of these songs. Dominating Stepsister. One Leg to Stand On. Here's my favorite, the album, album version of Spanked for Something I Didn't Even Do. Yeah. So it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's a real collector's item oh, it, there. It's that... become kind of a cult classic, yeah. surprisingly. Now, is this possible? When was the last time you were on this television program? I was here about a month and a half ago, and I, I haven't been home since. Now, is that... Uh, is... I haven't. I've been on the road the whole time. Isn't that awful? It's not awful, Dave. Not for us comedy foot soldiers. We're out there in the trenches, you know? <laughs> I'm not one of your big-time comedy generals with some cushy desk job winging in... <laughs> Three, four hundred a week. I'm out there in the trenches doing the clubs. Fighting the battles, you know? yeah. Oh, boy. Now, what do, you, what do you do to keep yourself occupied on the road? Well, you know, being on the road, because you, you do things. Well, you were on the road. You not did the long, road for a while. Not long. <laughs> you never did any of the comedy clubs. Uh, no. See, it's no. funny. You know, when the comedy clubs first started, they had regular names. You know, Austin Comedy Club, the Comedy Works, those kind of places. Now they all have comedy names. In the last six weeks, I've been at Jokers, Giggles, Tickles, ho hos, ha has, hee hees. Right, next month I'm working a new place called, <laughs> which is right, uh, right down. No, but what do you do on the road? You watch, you watch TV. You watch but, a lot of TV. But you don't you watch up. regular TV. Now, do you get what time do you get up in the morning? You get up like about let's say 11:30. You read the whole paper. Yeah. I mean the whole paper. You know the kind of thing where you go, look at this tuna casserole with a graham cracker crust. <laughs> You, you look it, uh... But I remember when we were in Tahoe, you were across the street, and it was like, you get up, you go down the lobby, you look at your watch, was it 1.30, Brady Bunch is on at 2. <laughs> it's strange. But it's nice coming here. Here is fun, because yeah. here you stay in a nice hotel, the, the fabulous... It's a classic. It's a very hip... <laughs> It's a very hip hotel. In fact, the Gideon Bible in the room has cable listings, which you don't usually... Know. Pretty hip. See, I like to go down to the lobby of the... <clears throat> listen to the old men tell tales of the sea. You know, there's always a guy... guy. <laughs> you know, it's the kind of hotel where the bellhops go, Psst, Spanish fly, governor? I said, no, thanks. <laughs> No, but it's a nice hotel. Now, yeah, now these are just jokes. You might want to identify these because right now the high-powered... Lawyers it, no, are, it's a, and they're fabulous. Yeah, hotel. it's a nice place. Well, you know what's nice? You're in the city. Like a couple of weeks ago, I was at Oklahoma City. Now it was a great club, but you're not in the city. You're in the suburbs. You know, you stay in these hotels that are on the highway. Right. You know the kind of hotels where you, you know, they're motels. You know, you open your door and it's like B B M B B M. Yeah. Like cars going. You know, like, oh yeah, yeah. Very strange. <laughs> So it's good to be back in the Big Apple. Oh, it's great. It's fun to be back here, especially at Caroline's, because that's kind of a, it's like hip New York kind of club. Yeah, it was a pretty impressive clientele they get down there. Folks all dressed up and stuff. Folks adults. dressed up. They had adults uh, down there. And a lot of, a lot of adults? Yeah. A lot of adults? Scared me. Uh, <laughs> now, how's, how's your motorcycle collection, your antique motorcycle collection? I haven't seen it. It may oh, all yeah, be stripped and robbed of parts oh, by this no, time. Oh, that's awful I... uh, We have to uh, pause for a commercial, Jay, but you, can you stay with us? If... It's a bit unorthodox, but all right. I guess it'll be... <laughs> We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Jay Leno is here, and later tonight we're going to bust more stuff with a steamroller. Um, what is the, uh, uh, the big problem for you on the road, aside from occupying yourself during the day? Well, you know, when you work these comedy clubs, I always meet a lot of young comedians. You know, and they always say the same thing, you know, how do you get on late night and... You know, how can I, you know, this is the truth, because they always say, how can I find out if my jokes are appropriate for the show, or if Dave has done the joke before, or even if it's a good joke. 
And I was talking with Robert Morton, your talent coordinator, and he was kind enough to lend me the book, which has, I guess, more or less become the Bible of the industry. Yeah. It should be on the shelf. Let me... Let me... Why don't you go around? <laughs> See, see if you can get it. Oh, there it is. Here it is. Yeah. Here it is. Let me bring it over here. It certainly is a big volume, it's isn't it? It's a big it? volume. Yeah. <laughs> this, of course, would be Late Night's big little book of overdone, hackneyed comedy premises. Oh, yeah. That really is the Bible. Now, the book contains, for example, what do you think the most hackneyed, overdone comedy premise would be? Beats me. Well, let's look up Anything hackneyed. to do with dining out? No. <laughs> Although that may be in the new abridged edition. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, that would be, can you imagine if E.T. landed in my neighborhood? Uh -huh. Boy, we'd beat him up, wouldn't we? Uh, another big one would anything with McNuggets. Uh-huh. I-E-C, where are the McNuggets in the chicken? That would be a big one. Uh-huh. Uh, can you imagine this guy at home is also very popular? Yeah. You, you know how this is where you take a famous person, preferably a sports figure, and you do a bit about him being at home, uh -huh. you know. Or, like, oh, here come the potatoes! Oh my gosh! And yeah, like yeah. that. Let's look up types of performers. <laughs> For example, what do you think the most obnoxious type of performer would be? Here it is, right here. The, the most obnoxious type? That, of course, would be the wacky duo. Are you familiar with them? <laughs> the wacky duo. Wacky duo. It says two. Caucasian males, mid to late 20s, no apparent ethnic heritage. Uh -huh. Now, the way this works is one guy comes out. You've seen the wacky duos. They come out. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Both my partner and I are thrilled to be here. Meanwhile, the partner's going, <laughs> will you stop, please? I don't know what got into it. Will you st We're on nationwide television. The guy's wacky. I don't know what's going on with him. Will you take him? The guy's crazy. I don't know what's gotten into him. <laughs> Another big one would be, let's see. Ooh, oh, here's one I know you like. The impressionist who just returned from the Hollywood party. Do you know this guy? Yeah, yeah. You I see, these amazing. were very big on shows for a number of years. This is the guy who comes out, and he says, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Recently, I just had the good fortune to be in Hollywood and went to a party attended by some of our biggest stars. It went something like this. Yeah. Then the guy <laughs> will turn around, mess up his hair, come back, look exactly the same, uh -huh. you know? I wouldn't mind if these people could rearrange their DNA structure and maybe, you know, <laughs> you know, come back as a crustacean or something. But it, it seems like such a yeah. waste to me. Well, thank goodness it's in this book. Well, it's all sake. right here, yeah. certainly in the volume. So any young comedians, again, that want to do this show should contact the staff and probably go through the book, I think is the best way to do now, it. Now, uh, what are you going to be doing to occupy yourself now you got two weeks in New York City? Oh, I'm having a fabulous time here in New York. Uh, it's amazing how they've cleaned up that Times Square area, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think if God does not destroy Times Square, he really owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. You know? <laughs> I like this very religious group we have here. <laughs> I like, at least they're trying to keep inflation down here in New York. This is the only major city in America where you can still see a movie for 25 cents, which mm -hmm. is kind of... Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I like those places. They have those signs for mature adults yeah. only. Yeah, most mature adults stand in a little booth with their pants at their ankles watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pretty good sign of maturity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, God forbid if some immature person should somehow slip past the yeah. tight security. <laughs> I'm sure there's some psychological profile testing that I'm, goes I'm into sure that before you're yeah, admitted yeah. to the premises. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when are, you, when are you going to get home again? I'm not home till June. Is that right? I'm going back to your hometown. I'll be, I'm doing Indianapolis Speed Week. I'll be at that Crackers Speed that Week. I is, it, is it called? It's not called Speed Week. It's called it? Speed Week, which alludes to the race, not to, again, the more popular thing we can't no, talk No, 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 I know that, but it's, no, they don't call it Speed they Week. They call it Speed Week, no, the Indianapolis no. 500. They, it's the, uh, what, what, what are the dates? The day, what is it, the 25th or something through the 31st. Hmm. Then I'm going back to one of my favorite cities, Austin. What do they call it there? They call it Austin. They don't have a race there. No, I don't... <laughs> I don't think they call it Speed Week in Indianapolis. No. Yes, they think. No, they... no, 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 no. They have the. They have the. <laughs> they have the. The guy said you want to work Speed Week. I said sure. Now I admit, among uh, the hip lingo among us road guys, is probably Speed Week. <laughs> <laughs> to an armchair general like yourself, yeah. I imagine the big race is probably more. <laughs> well, maybe I've been out of the game too long. Oh uh, yeah, I'm uh, going everywhere. Pittsburgh. 
Pittsburgh. Do you like Indianapolis when you go there? I have a good time there yeah. because I meet all these people. You know, I know you, I and they bring me there. embarrassing photos yeah. and things of you. They tell me heartwarming stories of the it. time you help their cat and things. No, like that. No, I liked Indianapolis. Oh, it's a good town. I yeah. like it there. That's why I'm going back. Speed Week, huh? Speed Week. Jay Leno, ladies and gentlemen. You know him, you love him, you can't live without him. Uh, we'll be right back to bust up stuff with the steamroller after station identification.